Hello, I've just fell through the wormhole. Welcome to Looney Tree Entertainment, and this one is entitled The Stargate Waffle. <laughs> no, it's Stargate Review. Review, review, review. Get the titles, please. Review at random. So hello, welcome. Okay, so I just want to put this out here before this video starts and starts rolling and I start waffling away. Um, there's a lot of sci-fi fans out there. There's a lot of Star Trek fans. There's a lot of Star Wars fans. There's a lot of Stargate fans. I want to apologize right now if I upset anyone by accident. All right, by accident. So I've been doing review rant randoms for a while. And you'll see why. Um, recently I filmed one for Wreck. I watched Wreck recently and quite enjoyed that. It's only like six, maybe it's eight six six episodes british thing and you know personally back in the day um of my childhood i've been an absolute love of video shops and going to pictures stargate um was heavily trailered and i remember the posters now i didn't see this at the pictures um i am a big fan of kurt russell um but at that time I wasn't really kurt russell i don't i think big trouble little china would have seen but i wouldn't have seen the thing yet i mean well, the things up there, thing, 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 the thing, thing. Um, so you know, say kind of in Roland Emmerich hadn't done Independence Day yet. You know, it was the next film he did um, before he did. So what else? Anyway, um, I remember seeing Star Trek. There you go. There's the first <laughs> Star Gate. Um, and liking it, you know, liking it. I like the mythology of the Egyptian pharaohs. I like that. I like how they built it. I'm fascinated how they built it and terrified the same way of like, you know, people getting crushed in there. And obviously enjoyed the mummy as well. And that kind of like, you know, last, like Egypt and the, the pyramids and all that is like, there's so much like, eh, how does that happen? And the mythology and no one really knows. And, you know, again, it's one of the last like eras of like, I don't know, exploration and exploring and where you can get a good mystery from. So I've seen Stargate, had it on VHS, it's around here somewhere, never got rid of it. I had it on DVD and the Blu-ray is quite rare. Now that was my Star Stargate until, I would say, start of last year, go roughly around the start of last year. Now of all the years of working at work, um, I've seen Stargate SG-1, Atlantis and Universe come and go in parts and, and extras and big boxes and there's a couple of VHS's out there I believe um, I was interested but I've never found myself a TV person until the last couple of years ever since I got rehooked on the X-Files and stuff like that so I ended up picking up the Blu-ray uh, I found it uh, Ultimate Edition and I'll tell you what really sparked my interest with that not only is the uh, director's commentary on there um, which they absolutely hammer the hell out of the TV show they make it clear that they've got nothing to do with it. I don't think they should have discarded so much. Um, I like the music. I've bought the score for both the film and the TV series since this. Um, but what really got me with Stargate was, you know, they find the ring, uh, they find the, 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 the hieroglyphic and all that. They're trying to work it out. What's cut from the original movie? It's almost like Waterworld when they find Everest plaque at the end of it. And that's cut out and i think that you just have to leave that in it makes perfect sense that 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 missing from Waterworld makes like no sense why they would cut that but i think with stargate the idea like to me it's two ways here the idea that there's a third reveal there's another door that they know that there is a threat on the other side because one of the uh, guards is stuck in stone and to me seeing that as an old age that fucking really got us i was like that's mint and it was even more mint that they cut it from the original so again watched it Kurt Russell playing a hard ass, James Spader, creepy as hell. I mean, he's really creepy in Wolf. I've revisited that recently. He's just got these really odd eyes. And, and again, that's down to his acting ability. Apart from that, you know, Leon Ripley's in there from Cuffs, who's pretty much in all of their Roland Emmerich's movies. And yeah, it's pretty much, you know, they go to the other side of the wormhole. There's a big war. Um, uh, Ra's around you know, seeking uh, eternal life and stuff like that. And, you know, if you listen to the comedy as well, they go on about the actor, Jade Davison, who played Ra, how he sort of like, was quite hard to work with. But again, again, if you look at it, the CGI for the time, the, the score, I think it was very well trailered. So that's Stargate, right? Okay, done, dusted. Now I have picked up a few books. Hey, so again, I'm gonna put these, put these back where I got them from, I've never read them spin-off stories anyway 
Um, and let's talk about Stargate SG-1, how this happened. So, again, for years working with HMV, Stargate was always there. And obviously Stargate's been brought out in these massive box sets, right? And then, boom, the juggernaut. Now, wow, wow. So that's how long it's been on the shelf. So the reason why I'm doing this run for, I finished this probably six months ago now. Um, I've actually built a room five and you're actually going to see room five in this video because I made a boo boo It's so heavy. Oh my god, it's destroying the place But again, this needs to go in the storage because down here is mainly display and DVDs Room five is going to be the archive of films because I just keep everything And that guy's got a poor exhaust outside. Anyway <laughs> Anyway Randomly half price box set now that's about a 90 pound box set give or take 89.99 for the penny all right and then it was buy one, get one free. And I get discount. And I was like, you what? Now Casper watches loads of TV series. Casper's all oh, you need to watch it. And I'm like, all right. So for 27 pound, I got that and that. That's a lot of human time. So that's 10 seasons. That's five seasons. That's 15 seasons and universe. We are going to mention universe. That's two seasons. Anyway, so, okay. Now, I watch TV shows now in bed to fall asleep to, I'm not gonna lie, that's what it does. Um, rather than watch a film and the film repeat itself and you miss a film, and don't get us wrong, I will watch a film now from time to time. I was watching Identity recently with the uh, audio comedy by the writer and then the audio comedy by the director. Just depends on how tired I am from work. But normally if I fo focus on a TV show and I'm liking it and it knocks us out, I'm like, that's what I want it for. It's what I enjoy with The X-Files and I've watched stuff like Warehouse 13 and watched quite a few series back to back now, like Mission Improved. Just finished Sleepy Hollow. Now I won't be doing a video for Sleepy Hollow. I think Sleepy Hollow stretched to four seasons completely nothing like what you know tim burton and johnny Depp did but tried its own kind of thing crosses over the bones yeah that's again sleepy hollow just finished that probably gonna have to start a dark angel i lent them to david peace and p my friend from years ago yeah 20 years ago never got them back found them a charity shop for two pound each for two seasons going to revisit it and i like that nostalgia but i found myself watching stargate like the music, right? Straight up, I like the music. Now, recasting uh, Kurt Russell and James Spader. Okay, we get that. That's a normal trend of the 90s. Happened a lot with sequels and spin-offs and, you know, sequels and not even the main actor and stuff like that. Um, you know, it came on. Got a text message. Um, it finds its ground, has its pilot episode. It introduces two new part, uh, part, uh, characters, Carter and Teak. I will butcher these names here, it's quite a lot. So they're the established four, as well as Don S. Davis, who was in Cuffs as well. Um, and then there's a couple of actors from the movie actually come back, which is pretty cool as well. And then it goes on for 10 seasons. Now, there's some good episodes. The episode of the 200 episode, where it is a parody of all that's great. It, it, it has storylines that stretch out. It also has spin-off episodes, kind of like X-File kind of things, where, you know, they go to different planets. They all, everyone, all three of them are um, guilty of turning up in the same old village and it's all looking the same. And like you get them episodes and you're like, oh no, one of these episodes. You know, they never seem to jump too far in the future. Um, you know, they're out there, they're fighting the raw, um, the symbiotes inside. It's pretty gruesome, it's pretty brutal. Um, there's a lot of, like, characters go away then come back and this is where i'm only gonna start getting confused i remember going into the latter part of the series you know flash guns even at one point you know the impending doom i think um richard dean anderson who was a macgyver i think he sort of completely changes kurt russell's character um completely becomes more comedy by the end of it as well I think Michael Shanks, who comes up to replace James Spader, blows James Spader out of the water. I love the reference to James Spader as well in it. That's quite good. It's self-aware of the film at certain points. So again, it had a lot of fun. But again, this stretched on for so long. It had a computer game. It went on and on and on. It, ten seasons. Now, going into the ten seasons, um, things started to change a lot. Atlantis was starting to get introduced. And I was aware of this. So I was going to say, at what point do I need to start flicking between the two series is, and that put me off it puts me off with the dc stuff on tv like where do i need to be watching 
Um, and Castle said not to worry about it. And obviously Atlantis is teased quite early on in six or seven season. You know, there's a quite a change of characters. Michael Shikes goes away, Michael Shikes comes back. He's a god, he's a descendant and all this kinds of stuff. Richard uh, Dean Anderson leaves for a while, then comes back and you follow the leader. And again, they change it up a bit, okay? The intro starts, new characters start coming in, characters that would go on to be in Atlantis. So again, if you're watching this and you've never seen it, I'm not trying to spoil this stuff. As a sci-fi, I enjoyed this. I generally like, right, okay, by the end of it though, I was like, right, this box set's got to end because um, you're in it 10 seasons and then they change the cast. Now the cast of Farscape come into it and it tries. I think at this point they should have went, right, let's just do Atlantis. I think they tried to carry it on for one or two seasons too much. Like Richard Dean Anderson's in and out, Michael Shacks, it's just, you're filling a slot on TV, I felt, by the last two episodes and then they have the two movies. I kind of feel left down by the movies as well because again I asked Casper, I said, do I need to watch these movies before I watch Atlantis? And he went, no, no, I'll just watch them. And I remember watching the second movie and feeling, fuck me. This was, I, I was just like, is that it? Like, again, you, you look at like 10 seasons after that and you think, could they not have done a movie? And then maybe he's really went for it and really sort of like went, right, it, but no, it is what it is, and I know a lot of people have revisited it, and I probably will revisit this, because um, it's going up into storage, as you'll see. But that was the first series, as I said, there's a lot of cameos, a lot of ground, you know, there's a lot of good things, there's a lot of episodes. And, you know, again, you're watching it, fall asleep, put it back on the next day, you know, music's there, and yeah, 10 seasons. So you want to know why I haven't done review run randoms for a while? 10 fucking seasons. 10 seasons, that's a lot of time. And I went straight into Atlantis. Now, it going in the end of the series, I was like, right, okay, bloody hell, fucking hell, what the hell? When's this Atlantis thing going to happen? And I was like, if I fell asleep and missed an episode, I missed a disc completely. And yeah, that's when you meant to start watching Atlantis. Personally, I think Atlantis is far better than SG-1. I felt the fact that Atlantis is set across the other side of the galaxy, the wraith of terrifying the first couple of episodes are like generally horrifying. They get a bit weak after that, but they're generally scary and a threat. And also the fact that the cast and crew are isolated um, away. I don't know if the cast and crew was there. That's making a film production. Um, I felt that was a massive part of it, which, you know, in, in SG-1, they were like, right, let's go home for a cup of coffee after a day's work running across the galaxy. You're like, eh? You know, so, and again, I don't think the film has that much serious, the series has that much serious of death. You know, by the time Michael Shack has come back for the fifth or sixth time, Richard D. D. Johnson has that whole episode where he's murdered every time. I think what Atlantis did was a lot better. Uh, Shepard comes in, and I think Shepard was a far better lead. You know what I mean? Richard D. Anderson, he's trying to follow Kurt Russell, then flips it in his own. Shepard comes along as new and fresh. I think the uh getting Boyd, he can bait up Boyd Crowder. It's um Blake, it's not Blake. You know who I mean, who comes in to replace Richard D. Anderson. I think he struggled in that thing. Shepard's just calm. And again, they chop the cast up here, the Rainbow Kid's in it for a bit, then he's gone. Um, some of the cast jumps around. It's great that Richard Dean Anderson comes into it, and it's great that uh, Michael Shags comes into it. But I think, um, oh, his name. Where is Atlantis? Oh, is his name. He's really good in it. You know, Hewitt, uh, David Hewitt, he's really good in it. He he really carries the series a lot. Not as much as Jason, Jason Moana when he comes in Moana. 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 Um, he's just Ronan, what a character. Um, and you know, some of the episodes are brutal, violent. Um, I think when you think uh, Ronan's killed, you know, I think that is wow. I think you think, wow, he's killed him off. I think it was a far better series. Um, I like the look of it a lot more, I felt the color of it. Um, that's a big thing with it as well. You know, it was very bland, similar, like a lot of stock footage. Um, with SG-1 but I think with Atlantis they had to push that that you know what I mean it's all green screen and they make it look nice and pretty waterworldy you know and there's a pe there's a lot of pendant doom and threat a lot of comical things and you know they try everything you know scenario again it's the same as the for other series it has these long stories but then they have the episodes that are essentially a throwaway episode of a you know essentially some of that could be a whole film so yeah that was Atlantis Again, I'm not trying to spoil every episode or go through every episode. I generally like the Lantus a lot better in SG-1. And then I watch Universe. Now, Robert Carlyle is one of the nicest guys I've ever met. 
and I was shocked when he got the role for this because it wasn't too long after I'd worked with him and he went off to America I mean he's done great from where his origins are with Cracker and stuff like that you know his rise but then he's a solid actor and what a funny guy I don't think anyone realizes how funny he actually is um, but he goes into this and I say like, all right Robert Carlyle Stargate really universe two seasons and I tell you what I put this on and I couldn't wait for this to fucking end. Um, I like Richard Dean Anderson being in it, Michael Shacks coming into it, even David Hewitt coming into it. I thought them little crossovers because Atlantis, how Atlantis didn't get to 100th episode was shocking. Um, you know what I mean? Didn't get to 100. I think they could have went for 100. I think they could even made a movie about it. But um, really sorry about the jump cut. I need to apologise because this camera is absolutely full and i need to wipe it down it's again i've just done six days of road work i've literally not had five minutes so i apologize so what i was about to say is when jason moana was cast as uh moana was cast as aquaman i went oh yeah and i went oh he's from atlantis <laughs> someone didn't really think too far there but he's awesome awesome actor so anyway uh universe straight up no intro like boom like you think how are we man I, f I don't know who's got the better intro song sg1 or atlantis you know they both had it you know they had the intros you knew who was who and this you like all right don't just done what justified's just done if you haven't seen the the new season of it justified had a really upbeat like uh intro and then the new one just like comes up with a little jingle and the te text that's what this did so these guys end up in space and um they're floating around it's so dark the entire series they don't really do anything the first series it's all like sort of mutiny and it's like a, you know i can see what they're trying to do here but again i think this could have been going on while atlantis was happening they could have rebooted this with what was going on on earth and had another story of any of the castle willing to come back i just kind of felt this was like a throwaway spin-off thing the ship's piling itself um flying through the universe and then just sort of poof gone you know what i mean um it's got a few cameos in there but i when it was heading towards the end i was like oh my god i need this to finish and i watched pretty much every episode in bed i actually watched i think the last three discs of universe in the editing studio and obviously when i'm editing i always have someone on the background and I'd be up and going all the time and I kind of feel felt even though I came back I hadn't missed anything which again I can see why it only lasts two seasons I said the same thing to Casper I says like your fan base is there even someone who's not a diehard fan I'm willing to put this out there and go look you know don't hammer us too much because I've like you know found this after it's been done and again standing here going saying this should be available uh, Atlantis did see a brief release on Blu-ray but then disappeared and I kind of off the top of my head, I think they've all just disappeared. But again, I'm still going to go out there. Oh no! I've just killed. And get that. And you know what I've just killed, don't you? Actually found these. Look at that. Daniel and uh, Corporal Connor. Yeah, right, man. Colonel O'Neill. I'm tired. Right, so yeah, that's me, Stargate Waffle. And I'm going to go to room five because these need to go up out the way because that is one hell of a box set to be sitting on a shelf with that by its side you know at least there you go my films and stuff like that are all true to man so i love them films and highlander you know what they're all the thing yeah seeing the outtakes right okay so welcome to room five i've just come up here one of my lights is bust and uh it'd be great outdoors it fell down so i've had to put that back up um, so yeah <laughs> you didn't really know that you've clicked on this to talk about Stargate but the reason why we're up uh, in room oh just found it some bullion um, is oh, I thought it was it's up here I'm sure it is a uh, Stargate Universe came up here to be filed so yeah as I said nicely boxed um, I just couldn't get away with that one so it feels good actually walking around here it's the first time actually Done any form of review up here yeah okay i haven't fell through the ceiling yet i can stand but yeah this has been the waffle for 40 episodes wow wow 1715 minutes 
man, I struggled, man. Then I started doing them, I mean, even Lou Diamond Phillips, and started doing them balls and then transporting across the universe and like, oh, he's there, he's here. And I was just like, what the fuck? But yeah, so yeah, Stargate officially comes to room five. The guy's still playing with his car outside. Um, obviously, I need to sort some shelves out. I'm not sure exactly what the plan is up here at the moment. I've got fifth element and some random stuff. But yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye for now. Hello, hello, still here. Um, I kept mentioning went with Robo Carlisle. Obviously, I went to the loft. This hasn't found a home yet, but it was reframed. It's front page of the Chronicle from uh, 2007. Wow. There's Robert Carlisle on the front cover. When Hollywood came to Gateshead, I <laughs> saw Robert Carlisle plays the drunken priest in the tournament. But uh, yeah, the frame this was originally in broke, and this, what was in here? I don't know if you ever seen me John Carpenter vinyl signed. Um, I've put that back in my collection just to listen to because I miss listening to that music. Um, and where that was is the picture of me, Sam, and Callum from New Zealand um, together, the brothers together. So this frame is going spare. So perfectly preserved. Maybe should have put the middle page as a big spread in it, but yeah. The end of the video this time. Goodbye for now.